This is 46-year-old Clifford Burns, who 51 minutes prior to this moment, drove up to his estranged wife's house in Warren County. Once he got there, he forced his way inside and attacked both his wife and his stepdaughter with a 17-inch tactical hunting knife. 22-year-old Megan Jenkins suffered serious injuries to her left arm but managed to survive. 42-year-old Patricia Burns wasn't so lucky. She was stabbed five times in the torso and pronounced dead the moment she arrived at the hospital. Seven minutes later, Clifford Burns showed up at the Warren County Police Station to hand himself in. Clifford, you gotta bear with me. I have my glasses on, alright? I know my rights and everything. You don't have to even read it. Just give me my charges. I'm pleading not guilty and I want to be put in cell. You have the right to remain silent. I'll sign your name right I there. I sign my name to nothing. Okay. When this bra can do this on Christmas, fuck me in the ass like this, it was my last straw, I'd rather live in prison. Over the next 5 hours, 13 minutes and 42 seconds, Clifford Burns will achieve something quite remarkable, which is the fact he somehow manages to employ every single ego defense mechanism known in psychodynamic literature. He will essentially blame everyone, and everything, on his current situation, apart from himself, and in the process, shut down critical parts of his own defense that he will later attempt to use in court. Hey, what's up? Do you know when a woman snaps you, and keeps your kids away from you? What it does to a man? That you work and pay for your kids your whole fucking life? Cliff had two daughters with the woman he just murdered, a 15 and 16 year old. One was out shopping during the attack, while the other witnessed the attack and called 911. Cliff will bring them up a lot to say how much he loves them, but it's important to note they were both absolutely terrified of him. He was abusive to everyone in his family, and his biological daughters were no exception. They hadn't seen him in over a year up to this date, and essentially wanted nothing to do with him. Then the Bacchus brothers rigged the charges when that fucking guy goes over and shoots my old lady's house up and beats the fuck out of her, and he gets misdemeanors, you cocksuckers. Fuck you, motherfucker. He was talking about his kids 12 seconds ago, and now out of absolutely nowhere, he's going off on whoever the Bacchus brothers are. So here's the context. Patricia was married to Cliff for 15 years. She left him in 2010 after suffering nonstop domestic abuse. Two months later, she started dating a firefighter named Ted Bacchus. The two fell in love, but argued a lot, and one of the arguments led to Ted firing one round from his gun into the ceiling of Patricia's bedroom. Patricia then tried forcing him out of the house, at which point Ted pushed her into the kitchen counter and then onto the floor, causing her to hit the back of her head. Ted then left, and Patricia went to the emergency room where she was treated for bruising to the head and lower back. She reported the incident, and Ted pleaded guilty in exchange for six misdemeanors, which caused some controversy, as many thought the charges were too lenient, and there was speculation that he was given special treatment because he had two brothers in the local police force at the time. It's quite the story, and Cliff will cling on to this story for dear life. He will claim it's the reason he explodes into these uncontrollable rages at the mere thought of Ted Bacchus. Yet as this video plays out, you'll start noticing the true source of the animosity, which as many of you will have already guessed, is jealousy. He will give himself away on this element multiple times without realizing. He'll also initiate this item of subject matter in the most random and creative ways that at times will make what he's talking about virtually incomprehensible. So we've had to create this notification for the more disorienting moments he brings it up. You know what happened up there. All misdemeanors, nine of them, when he shot the house up with an unregistered handgun. Do you know who Teddy Bacchus is? If I ever could get my hands on him, I'd fucking kill him. I'm a fucking man in every aspect, motherfucker. The fucking game! I gotta reframe myself, because I'm really... I can't even take it no more. The two officers aren't the interrogators. They're just watching Cliff so he doesn't hurt himself or damage property. The actual interrogator will arrive shortly. You know what it is. I love the broad. She took everything from me. My lawyer called me today and said I'm going to jail for a violation of not paying child support. Based on the information of this violation, he was facing somewhere between 3 to 15 days in jail. 
paid his cunt 250 a fucking week. I lost everything. My fucking business, all my vehicles, and my fucking house. I'm whittled up to a $600 apartment while this cunt runs around on my fucking money. His freelance business had been on the decline for the last five years, which is the actual reason for everything he just mentioned. The Bacchus brothers rigged his charges, and this is what I heard because I know everybody in the town. Okay. The, the man that built the fucking town hall told me he was going to lose his gun fucking, his hunting license, so they didn't give him felonies. You did that shit down in Albany, you still wouldn't be out of jail today. They would have fucked you up. This is the Wild West, man, and I'm a wild motherfucker, ain't I now? In the more common circumstance, when someone is facing the inevitability of spending the next several decades in prison, the more grandiose elements of their character tend to dissipate. The nature of their situation rapidly sets in the feelings of anguish and despair, leaving not much room for anything else. Least of all the more extravagant or perhaps fraudulent aspects to one's character. Cliff is very much an exception. He clings on to a particular aspect of his personality that we can only describe as Rambo Cliff. The second concept so regurgitated that it literally needs its own notification. The moniker is inspired by a well-known franchise centered around a highly capable special forces operator, and it was chosen to encapsulate Cliff's varied attempts to appear tough and intimidating. This ranges from his deadly skills at unarmed combat, to his proficiency with a firearm, and operational effectiveness in the mountainous regions of the United States. You would have loved to have a motherfucker like me in Iraq, wouldn't you? I've got them fucking tile heads. It's worth noting that Cliff never served a single day in the military. He also had no training whatsoever in combat sports or martial arts, unless you count the made-up variation of kung fu he demonstrates throughout this interrogation. Then by the end of the night, he'll have acquired approximately three and a half minutes of experience. I love this country, and it fucking did me wrong. <laughs> fucking wrong! I'm gonna tell you what listen it is. Bring the Bacchus in, brothers, and I'll fight them one-on-one -on -one with one fucking hand. I'll break both their fucking jaws right off them. I believe you. Do you believe me, motherfucker? I, I can see you're very passionate. You want to see? There it is, white power. That's what I believe in. The Irish. You guys, you deal with weapons every day. I had AK-47s, AR-15s at my disposal. I could have made this a war. You want to know what my mindset was? Take her out, spray paint the building, let's play back his boys, and take him in the mountains. You would have had to drop a fucking platoon in for me! A platoon, brothers! I kept the war, I came here and did the right thing, I turned myself in. I'll go to prison. Listen, you guys, I gave my children everything. Victoria fucking Secrets and they're fucking 15. Abercrombie, Nikes, American Eagle. Sure. What do you fucking think I don't know the names? You know how fucked up I am right now? Because I love my wife and I love my kids and I did right by that bitch. I met her in a strip club. Next thing I know, this cocksucker, I'm, I'm traveling in this unit every day. Two hour fucking commute and he's fucking my wife. Hell of a choice in men. The fucking scumbags living above an apartment. Paying 400 a fucking month to live above a bar room with a fucking beat up pickup truck. I make 100000 a fucking year. I'm a pro tree climber. What the fuck is that? A pro tree climber is apparently another word for a tree surgeon. Coming home fucking her in my bed. I had 10000 of brand new furniture I gave the fucking cunt. What more do you want? How much do you want to kick the fucking thing? She bought a cigarette on me every day. It's Christmas, my third Christmas alone, third fucking Thanksgiving. Well now, motherfucker, it's time to party. Cliff's future defense will go for a manslaughter charge relying on the notion that he had a psychotic break, that upon hearing of the arrest warrant, thought he would never see his daughters again because of it, at which moment he lost all control of his own judgment and decision-making, resulting in the terrible actions that followed. But he just spoke about grievances that stem back to over three years ago. He's giving away evidence to suggest that the attack was influenced by revenge and retaliation, not just by a singular moment of madness stemming from his undying love as a father. Listen. You lucky I'm in my right mind because I was going to have a shootout with you. But I did it the right way. I handled it like a man, so thank you. Thank okay? you. No, that's right. If I'm pretty goddamn good. I could drop a 30-round mag and fucking... I don't even want to tell you the time. I'll pop the other one and take it again. I know what time it is. An unregistered fucking handgun in an apartment complex. If that dude was here, I'd try to crack him. Right? You know what time it is. And she said he wanted to marry her. Knew her for fucking six months. I had 15 years in her and two beautiful children. And here's the kicker with the stripper. 
Cliff spends the next four and a half minutes explaining his unequivocal superiority to Ted Backus. Once the tirade is over, he finally calms down. I was in Hadley, right on the border, yep. and I bought the house on Luzon, we were remodeling it. Mm -hmm. The whole house lights up. The designated criminal investigator will now enter the room to conduct the interrogation. The timing seems almost perfect as Cliff appears to be compliant for the first time. So David, sir, nice to meet you. I'm sorry, I don't know your name. Burns Clifford R. Oh, nice to meet you, sir. Um, you know, you guys, this is... I don't want to be disrespectful. You know what I'm saying? I'm sorry. What's on my mind is the Bacchus brothers and your fucking corrupt charges that were rigged. The interrogator, Detective Doug David, will come to have a rather complicated relationship with Burns Clifford R. From Doug's perspective, it's Christmas Eve. He doesn't want to be sitting in a police station going back and forth with a psycho murderer. He wants to get in, get the suspect's account of what happened, then get out. But unfortunately for him, Cliff has other plans for their Christmas Eve together. He went over and shot my wife's house up at the fucking... That means felonies across the board. Okay. Um, I'm just getting arriving here, so I'm not quite sure what transpired this evening, and would like to just try to find out a little bit of... What transpired yes, is sir. a man's been pushed to the edge. What fucking place calls you up today on Christmas Eve telling him you're putting a warrant out for his arrest if he didn't pay his child support? D just that fat call. fucking cunt bar next door in the fucking support collection unit. If Teddy Bacchus is the love rival in Cliff's comic book-inspired perception of reality, then Barb, from Support Collection, is most definitely the arch-nemesis. And also our third topic of discussion that requires its own notification. Barb's occupation is handling child support payments, which includes following up with the debtors when they don't come through. Cliff genuinely appears to resent this woman on a cellular level. Her name alone will at times bring him to a place where he morphs into some type of primal being, sustained only through its unrelenting quest for murderous revenge against a collections administrator. It's a difficult thing to accurately explain, but you'll be given multiple visual examples later on in this video. I missed two payments. Okay. And, and then what, what happened after that, sir? I don't know what happened. My lawyer called me up, said there's a warrant out for my arrest. Okay. And possibly, um, again, I'm just walking in. What happened this evening, sir? I lost my life this evening over a fucking stripper and an alcoholic piece of shit. All right? The gun was unregistered. Every fucking bullet in the chamber was a fucking felony. You read Governor Cuomo's laws? D did you drive up here, sir, from your house? Go fuck yourself. How the fuck do you think I got here? Flew or walked? My car's right out in the right, fucking park. Are you fucking stupid? Cliff is clearly aware that giving away crime scene information can be detrimental for his defense, something he probably learned from the show Criminal Minds, which he'll later state is the only thing he's able to watch on TV. Them Bacchus brothers? I would have loved to ran into them. She must have had a fucking heart on. She fucking on Christmas Eve. Can't leave me to fuck alone. Admit it, what are the charges when you take an unregistered fucking handgun in an apartment complex and dislodge it? Look, you can't even- you want, I'll wipe that smirk off your fucking face, motherfucker. You ever sir, laugh at me again? No, you're smiling like you think no, it's funny. I don't, sir. You I just smile. After you drove up here, sir? Fuck you, you nigger. What happened? What happened after Suck you drove up here? After you drove well, up go here, Go fuck happened? yourself. What happened after go you Go fuck up yourself. Up what do you think, I can't kick you upside the head with my fucking boot right now? I'll make you wear this size A, motherfucker. The interrogator sits through 110 seconds of Cliff's commentary, which is mostly a summary of how Cliff would comfortably beat him in a fistfight. The lecture eventually reverts back to the topic of child support, and the interrogator will now attempt to establish a connection by finding common ground in the subject. She put a warrant out on Christmas Eve for me not for missing two payments. Well, if it's any consolation to you, sir, I've paid child support for years. Two hundred and fifty a week, though. Um, that's a thousand a month. That's like that's, you make ninety thousand a year. That, that's more than. That's I more pay. than you make. That, that's more How's than I make. Well, actually, you're right. It's more than I make too. But it's exactly. Uh, barb, barb, barb. She fucking started a war. This fucking cunt. I missed two child fucking support payments. The fucking cunt. I bet you she wasn't even working today. I can tell you, I've been through through uh, some difficult times myself, all right, and I just, I, I, um, I know it's not an easy thing to deal with, especially around the holidays. I lost everything, and I'm definitely, I'm hurt. What do you mean you lost everything? The woman's taken everything, I just, I can't even live anymore. 
I just, I'm done. I lost every fucking thing in my life I worked for. Don't you fucking get it? And when a t man loses his little baby girl, that he fucking knows and pays every fucking thing for that. And here we get our first glimpse of what appears to be genuine sorrow. It partially consists of the thought of his daughters, but for the most part, revolves around financial woes and general self-pity. I went to courts, I spent all my money, I hired the biggest lawyer going, and I got fucked, I don't get it. She made a mockery of me, man. She knew the guy six months, he beat the fuck out of me, shot the house up. What kind of a fucking woman can have a man like that in her life? Thousands of dollars, I work for nothing, man. Everything's being taken from me. What the fuck do you want from me? I work too hard for my shit. Today was it, it was the breaking point. They can have it all, you motherfuckers. Take it all. Take my dump truck. I work my fucking life off for it. My chipper, my business. Take my car, my fucking $30,000 motorcycle. I work for take it all, motherfuckers. I don't care no more. Just put me in a fucking jail cell. Who was at the house tonight when you came? <laughs> I don't know. You can't. I'm fucking asking you that. If you ask me again, I'm going to fucking rip your fucking head off. Did you do this to Teddy Bacchus? Cliff primarily sits in silence for 90 seconds, only interjecting at random moments to further express his hatred for the Bacchus brothers and Barb. The interrogator once more attempts to establish a connection. I used to get these, um, they'd mail me these things. Listen, I got everything, the coupons, all of it. Yeah, but you know my coupons. Irish pride? His Irish pride was the reason he didn't make use of his child support coupons, and also the reason he doesn't accept welfare. I don't go to welfare. I'll never collect a fucking thing from this cocksucker, nasty nigger fucking state. You do not appear to be a welfare kind of person. That's You're right. Hard working man. And I fucking, fucking, I haven't worked in three weeks. You see the cows that just coming off my fucking hands? You're a hard working man. That's what I am, and I had a fucking stripper take everything, and a guy fucking was an alcoholic too. They're both alcoholics. That's my fucking pride right there, Irish brother, Ireland. I fucked up tonight. I ruined my whole fucking life over a fucking stripper. Who lives above a fucking bar room at 400 a week and tries to beat up truck? Well, it was it today. I lost everything, didn't I, buddy? 100,000 in business equipment, 30-some thousand dollar motorcycle, the Z28 out in the fucking parking lot, but I'm a bum. What, do I sell crack or something? Like a hard working man. That's right, that's what I am. I got fucked by the system. You know the deal? You gotta fuck some of your Irish once in a while because the white man's a minority now in this world. How old are you? 53. 50 fucking 3. You look pretty good for your age. But why are your eyes all bagged up? Having a couple shots tonight yourself? No. I'd be a fucking maze. Cliff insults the investigator's appearance some more before crying about his finances again. I have not in two fucking days. I put my last one in my tank. It's any consolation, I can tell you. I've been through child support and been through the whole thing. So, and it's not easy. It's not easy seeing, not seeing your kids on holidays or seeing them at all. Um, I know the system sometimes doesn't sound like it's fair, it doesn't seem the like it's fair. The lady fucked me over there. Her name's Barb from the Warren fucking County fucking support collection you know, over there. What happened up there? I don't know what the fuck happened. I blacked the fuck out. Do you know what, what you got there or who was there when you got there? I couldn't tell you nothing. When you got up there? You want some shit? Uh, if you can just set it on the table, please. These are my business cards. Just you ask me another question about when I got there, I'm going to spit on you. Please. All right? Don't ask me again. The investigator takes that as the cue to end the interrogation, so he starts trying to collect Cliff's basic information for his intake process. Cliff, however, isn't done. He's got a lot more emotional baggage left on board, and feels like right about now is a convenient time to offload the entire cargo. So every time he provides a piece of basic information, he follows up with an average of four and a half minutes of incessant rambling. I don't even fucking remember. I got a post office box at the post office. Mm -hmm. You guys don't understand, I couldn't live my fucking life every day to fucking was. Cliff degrades his wife for 43 seconds, clarifies his superiority to Ted Backus for just over a minute, then further declares his unyielding hatred for Barb. He now asks the police officer to loosen his handcuffs. 
Can you loosen this up? I'm, my whole hand's cut up, you guys. Just a tiny little, one little click. I ain't going nowhere, I ain't done it. I go to Kyle and I'm done, you guys. At least I got what I came here. I could have went in the fucking mountains. I fucking lost it. I don't even know how the fuck I got up here. I ain't got no gas in my fucking car. I'm down to no money. I got no fucking food. I don't know what she's wanting me to do when I got a lady violate me on a fucking Christmas Eve. What is Anybody gonna ask me some fucking questions, motherfucker? You punk ass motherfucker! I got you a fucking break tonight, motherfucker. We appreciate it. I already told Do you that. fucking appreciate you think you're gonna run with me no. through the mountains, motherfucker? Said, you would have to you. drop a platoon in for me! We covered that, man, and we talked earlier about that, and we said thank you. You did the right thing. Fuck you! When an illegal handgun goes in an apartment complex and is discharged, it's felonies! I'll twist you like a fucking pretzel, both of you, if I have these cups on. I am a marshal. I'll put my fucking boot right up to your fucking side of your fucking head. Listen, come on. Kill me! Put a bullet in me right now. Put a fucking bullet in me. Blow my fucking head off right now. Take the night out and put one in me. Just fucking end it. I should have pretended I had a gun out there. I thought about it all the way. I don't want to live no more. It's the money, 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 the money. It's all fucking money, ain't it, you motherfuckers? You got your plush job. You don't know what the fucking recession is. Have you ever felt the pinch of the economy? You ever got a stop paycheck, motherfucker? You never felt it. You never knock out a check. You never knock out a fucking check, both of you. I did everything right, picket fucking fence, and I got it shoved up my ass because I went to a strip club and married a stripper. Say that on your thing. She's a fucking stripper and a devil that plays men. Look at back is new her six months and shot the fucking house up and beat her up. Then you're here fucking telling me. I want my fucking lawyer. Do you understand? Do I have to tell you in English? Get me a fucking lawyer. I don't care who the fuck you get. I'm not answering none of your fucking questions. I'm done. And I'm not signing none. Do you under fucking stand me, motherfucker? Who's your lawyer? Who you want? Paul Dwyer. That's your attorney? That's who you want? No, I really don't want him because I can't even fucking stand him. Cliff continues to ramble about everything he hates for almost four minutes, ignoring any questions about his basic info. The detective and police officer eventually start talking amongst themselves, and literally walk out of the room as Cliff is mid-sentence. But they could take two fifty a week out of your pocket. You can't be insane to make them fucking deals. I'm gonna throw up. I'm not feeling with you guys. You need a glass of water or something, Cliff? Or? I haven't eaten in two fucking days. I'm self-employed. I will never ask anybody. I'm, I got Irish pride. I, I will die in my apartment. I'm man. asking you. You want me to get you a glass of water? Did I help you? You could. Sure. She's a stripper. Don't you get it? I made the worst decision. I go from living in a fucking $250,000 house to a $600 crack apartment. And fucking Schenectady. That dude went there to kill her that night with the gun. What man brings a loaded handgun to a fucking house? He went to kill her. What the fuck are we waiting for? Will you bring me to the fucking fucking lockup and put me in my jail cell so I can go to fucking sleep, do something? I fucked up, man. I, 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 I wish I did my military career and, and fucking got out and become a cop. I want the full thousand, not the fucking two hundred to risk my life and take a tree on over somebody's house, tie the fucking knot, cut them ranch, grab power line. Fuck that, I'm done with it. It's like it's all I can think about. It's all that's on my fucking mind is this stupid bitch. This bitch. It's every fucking day. They do nothing! Nothing, 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 nothing. Well fucker! It's done now, ain't it, motherfucker? Give me the back of his bring him in one-on-one, -on -one. just fuck him. Strip me down, I'll fight him naked. Bring both them coward motherfuckers in, I guarantee on my life I fuck their faces up. You got ten grand, everything's under the rug. When you're a hard-working slob and you're white, they gotta have at least one or two white guys that they fuck over to make it look like it's a fair court. Because I know I live like an outlaw. I'm a fucking hell's angel. I roll cross-country to hell's angels. This you wanna know? We're bad motherfuckers.
that fucking cunt over there to put a warrant out on fucking Christmas Eve and call my lawyer? She's out of her fucking mind. Christmas Eve tonight, where are you going? You're going home to your kids, aren't you? I ain't going home to fucking shit. I lost everything. What's the fucking difference if I sit in a one-room apartment with no food or you guys support me? I was going to sell everything, buy an on-off-road dirt bike, and go right up into the fucking bear slides and go about 50 miles into the Adirondack Mountains and build my cabin and my shelter and bring two weapons, a 30-30 and a bow and arrow. I'd survive like that for the rest of my life. Done. Never come out again, never pay child support. Maybe in five or ten years I would have come out with a beer just to see how the kids were doing. I don't even know what to do anymore. Honest to fucking God, I just don't even know what to do. I don't want to live. I thought about blowing my own fucking head off. There ain't nothing like getting up at fucking five in the morning and seeing the sun come off the top of the mountains and you're in a brook stream fucking hunting for brook trout. Go back to the campsite at ten in the morning trouting eggs right over the fucking thing. That's a white man. That's Irish, brother. You know the Irish? Christmas... Eve, and they're calling my lawyer for two payments, tell him there's a warrant going out for his arrest, where does he live? I got a fucking apartment in the post office box, because I don't want people bothering me anymore. There's a JT bum downstairs for me, you want to laugh? I have such a fucking kind heart, the cocksucker ain't got none. He gets a check every month, but he's barely living. I bring him up in my apartment, I give this guy my food before I eat. You guys never felt the recession. The only fucking show I can relate with on TV now is Criminal Minds. I watch it ten times a fucking day. Cliff explains the plot device of Criminal Minds and how he knows everything about the legal system because of it. The investigator once again just gets up and walks out as Cliff is mid-ramble. How I know everything about it, but I can't win in family court. I can't win with nothing. I got my dick dragged in the dirt. Did he call my lawyer up? He offered you the, offer the phone to call him, didn't he? Cliff, call You know what, to tell you the truth? Why do I even need to call him? Man? Like I'm going, is there nothing he can do for me? I'm going to throw up. This fucking, fucking cunt. <coughs> From the support collection unit. Call my lawyer on Christmas Eve. I didn't even know they were working. And then she comes in tonight, another fucking holiday to fuck me up in the ass? That fucking no good fucking cunt? You tell her, if I ever knew her fucking face, I would have tore her fucking heart out. The fucking cunt? Motherfucking cunt? Clifford, Patricia's dead. Okay. What? What? She's dead. Okay. God, why did you fucking do this? Why did you take everything you got over there, dude? Dude. Yes, sir. Pop me. Get under my head. Shoot me, please. No. We already talked about that, Cliff. Now what we do, bud? Chill for a minute, bud. I can't fucking chill out. That fucking cunt over in fucking Warren County? Fuck her. If I could take these things and change, I'd kill her. And her whole fucking family, the motherfucking cunt. Money, 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 money. Fucking never bother anybody. Sit in my apartment all fucking day long. Can't even watch fucking TV. Can't have a conversation with nobody. Haven't eaten in two fucking days. I mean, what the fuck? I'm fucking starving. Fucking Christmas Eve. Being told I got a warrant out for my arrest. Warren County Sheriff. So here I am. I deliver myself. I lost everything. My business, I don't even know how to call in society and I'm going out of my fucking house. I don't even know what to fucking do. What do you want me to fucking do? You took every fucking thing from me. Every fucking thing. Where's the Bacchus brothers? Can you point me in their fucking direction? My whole house gets shot to fuck up a gunshot. Unregistered fucking handgun. Every bullet in the fucking, fucking, fucking chamber. You know what that was? Seven years. You ever read Guam, uh, Cuomo's gun laws? Everybody destroyed my life. Money, 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 money. You want my fucking money? Here, you want my money, asshole? I don't need your money. I know you don't, because you never felt the recession, you cocksucker. You get your check every fucking week. Your kids mean anything to you? 
Everything. Me too. Every fucking thing. I just answered your own question. Every fucking thing. I pay 250 a week in fucking child support. I was one of them fucking statistic Irish guys that have to fuck one. So they fucked me in the ass. Used to be the best guy in the world to pick a fucking pussy up anywhere. I fucked up. I married a fucking full-blown alcoholic and a stripper. 250 a fucking week. She's living like a fucking king. I, I, I can't even fucking live. Fucking guy can go in your fucking kid's house and shoot it up and walk away with misdemeanors. I gotta piss. Goes when another cop tells me to keep fucking paying, 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 paying. And I'm taking your house and taking every fucking thing you want. I work for my motorcycle. She tells me she's fucking owns half of it. Never paid a fucking dime for it. What, did she put the spikes on and go up the fucking trees? That fucking cunt at the support collection unit. She's the one who did it all. That dirty fucking cunt. If I could ever get her in my hands, I'd cut her to fuck up her fucking... Why she fucking wants right now. I can't even get over it. How can women be so rotten and fucking ruthless? You married, bro? Yeah. How's it going? I'm, I'm glad to hear that. I was set up to fail. And there's not a fucking thing I can do it. Do it, you know? I just don't even know what to fucking say. What am I supposed to keep paying and watch her build my fucking dream with another man? Fuck all that. I can't run from my fucking problems, man. I face them head on. That's why I know him, man. Cliff was transferred to the Warren County Jail soon after this moment. He spent nine months hatching up a defense, and his initial plan, as we know, was to go for a manslaughter charge by claiming profound loss of self-control. He even claimed the knife used to kill Patricia was taken from her own kitchen during some type of struggle. The state then provided witness testimony that showed he arrived at the house in full camouflage brandishing a large weapon. They also played the segments from his interrogation displaying his well-established hatred for the victim, along with the moment he vowed to escape from prison for the sole purpose of cutting up Barb into little pieces. He pleaded guilty to murder soon after. On September 5, 2014, Clifford Burns was sentenced to life in prison with a possibility of parole after 23 years. He is currently housed at the Maximum Security Penitentiary in Clinton, New York. When they put the court order on me, they said all my guns had to go. I got rid of every fucking one of them. All right, motherfucker, you'll never find them. My favorite's the AK fucking 47 with a 30 round mag. Two of them taped together. I carry 10 of them. I used to go on the mountain all fucking day just popping my rounds. In full fucking camo. Ooh, you're hard showing off. Cause...